Okay, this week, let's tackle a topic that seems seemingly mm -hmm. simple, mm -hmm. right? Why do we live in a universe that has three spatial dimensions, you know, forward, back, left, right, up, down, mm -hmm. and one time dimension? Now, it, you know, it seems like a strange question because yeah. it's, isn't it obvious mm. that that's the way things are? Could it be different? Well, this is one of the really weird things. Um, I don't know. So mathematically, when, when we when, when us physicists, we wander over to the maths department as students to get our maths uh, education. They, when they introduce numbers of dimensions, the things that we use to model, the physicists will come back and use to model. There's nothing in the, in the maths that says that there has to be three dimensions of space. We can easily imagine four dimensional spaces, five dimensional, two dimensional. Two dimensional is easier. The, we can write down what that's like. I've not yet met anyone who thinks that they can imagine a five-dimensional um, sphere or a five-dimensional rabbit or something like that. So there's something kind of weird that there's some limitation in our minds. But mathematically, and so within theoretical physics, it, it, there are certain situations and quite deep situations where you have to tell the equations that there's three dimensions. They don't do it for you. For example, a very ubiquitous uh, common uh, phenomenon in the universe is waves. There's all sorts of waves all over the place. You can have uh, uh, sound waves are one-dimensional waves, um, where the the sound wave the air waves backward and forwards in the in the direction that the wave travels. You have two-dimensional waves like waves at the beach, uh, where the the water moves up and down, but the wave moves in another way. We can have three-dimensional waves, and so when you write down these equations, you have to tell it how many dimensions there are. And so if there was a four-dimensional universe, we could easily write down a four-dimensional wave equation and say what it does. Yeah, yeah. And so in particular, when we get to space and time, the Einstein's theories of relativity, we have to tell it three dimensions of space, one dimension of time, and then we can explain our universe. Yeah, I mean, it always seems like an obvious starting point, right? When you mm -hmm. write down physical quantities, it's just taken as a given mm -hmm. that there are three dimensions of space and one of time, and that's how you cast your equations. But I could, as you said, I could always add another mm -hmm. space dimension or add another time dimension or multiple space and times or even take some away. Yeah. So we we can write down the equations, right? So we can look at the physics if the universe had a different number of dimensions of space and time. So what would the implications be? Well, let's go through a couple of them. What would happen to gravity within that? So we can write down Newton's equation of gravity, or if we wanted to, we could do it with Einstein's. So it gives the same result in this case. In the case, in a form where uh, you then have to tell it how many dimensions of space and time there are. So it turns out, if you're familiar with the equation, the 1 over r squared at the bottom, the 1 over the radius squared when you work out the force, that squared is the number of dimensions minus 1. So it's actually 3 dimensions minus 1. That gives you the squared. So if you want a 4-dimensional universe, just change that to 4 minus 1 and you get 3. And you might think, oh, you'll just have different gravity. It'll work differently. But one of the most important things about a gravity in our universe is that um, you can have closed orbits that aren't perfect circles. So here's the way this works. If you have a perfect circular orbit, that's fine. That's, that works within gravity. It works in gravity if there's four dimensions as well. So now let's go back and we, let's not have a perfect circular orbit. Let's, our, our, our planet, just before we're about to send it around the sun, let's throw it a little bit harder. Okay, so it's not going to quite go around in a circle. So in our universe, it'll just go on a slightly elongated circle. It'll go in an ellipse. Mm -hmm. It'll still come back to where it was. And so the Earth doesn't go exactly in a circle. It goes on a slightly elongated ellipse. And other planets go on slightly weirder ellipses. Pluto goes on a slightly longer ellipse. And then there are very, very long ellipses of, of, of comets as they mm -hmm. come in and then around. All right. Step up to four dimensions or any number of higher dimensions. What happens if we are trying to make that circular uh, uh, orbit, but we get it slightly wrong? Well, instead of making a closed orbit that's slightly elongated, we instead, that's not the solution. The solution is not an ellipse. It's a spiral. The planet will either spiral in or spiral out, depending on whether you, you threw it a bit too hard or a bit too soft. And so what that means is you don't have stable planetary orbits in gravity in higher numbers of dimensions. It's true for Einstein's uh, 
theory as well if you do it in general relativity. So that's one thing that's it's kind of interesting. In our universe, we've got the right number of dimensions to have planets that stay in stable orbits around stars due to gravity. Okay. It's actually, it's kind of interesting as well is that... Um, we live in three spatial dimensions. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was a famous book on f Flatland that mm. was published more than 100 years ago, which pointed out, um, topologically, human beings are donuts, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how we, how we form from cells, right? We have a, 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 a canal that passes all the way through us. Food goes in, food comes out kind of thing. We are effectively donuts. Right. And you need that at least three-dimensional structure to have uh, an elementary canal. So right. If, and uh, this is one of the, the things that was facing his creatures that lived in Flatland, which was two-dimensional, is that you can't have the equivalent of a donut because you'd have two pieces right. with a line between them. So you needed to basically behave more like a two-dimensional bacterium where you envelop your food and then digest it from the inside. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we live in um, a universe where we have the right number of spatial dimensions for us to have this structure where mm. we could re-exist as uh, three-dimensional beings with with an elementary canal. So there's another weird result. Actually, this one's from general relativity, not from um, uh, from Newton. But actually, if you look at uh, gravity, as I've just described it, is is sort of gravitational force in empty space. So the mass is here, the mass is there, and the gravitational force sort of reaches out. If you do two dimensions, you can't have a gravitational force in empty space. It doesn't work. You have you can only have gravity where there is matter. And so actually gravity doesn't work in two dimensions either. Oh, okay. That's okay. a weird one. The other thing we can do is um, if you have a model of an atom in your head, that is this solar system picture where you have the nucleus and then the, the, ele the electrons go around the outside. Now, when we describe that, we, act we don't reach for anything like Newton's equations of gravity. Of course, there's quantum mechanics and all those sorts of things. But interestingly, in those equations as well, uh, the orbits aren't stable if you have more than more than three dimensions. And so it, what happens is uh, basically the equivalent of spiraling in and spiraling out, but except that you, what you have is transitions to states that are just closer and closer to the nucleus. So there's no, within our, our atoms, there's something called the ground state, where if you leave something alone, it will go to its lowest energy state and then stay there. And that's great because that's where all our atoms are and we're stable and we're still here. There is no ground state if there's four or five or six dimensions. If you take the equations of quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation, and you apply it to a four or five dimensional universe and you say, what happens to the electrons? They just they just step their way rather than spiraling in, but they just quantum jump their way into the nucleus. And so atoms aren't stable either. Okay. So we've messed around with space. Right. Now you can also mess around with number of time dimensions. Again, it seems obvious we've got one time dimension. Mm. And if we had zero time dimensions, then then it's just abandoned science, right? Because everything <laughs> in science is about changes over time and making mm. predictions about tomorrow from looking at the past. So, you know, we need at least looks like we need at least one time dimension to do to science, but what if we had two or three or four time dimensions. Well, this is a weird one. Like, what would it feel like? So, one of the things that we've got within within relativity, when you do special or general relativity, is because you know space and time are doing weird things. You try and focus on each observer has their own path through space, t space and time, and they've got their own clock, and they can just keep looking at their clock and ignore all the weirdness going. At like, at least. Like relativity had better explain uh, the ticking of their clock relative to other people when they meet their clocks. So if there were, I, I guess you might be able to do this if there were zero dimensions as well. But if there's say two dimensions of time, zero dimensions of time, of course. If there are two dimensions of time, three dimensions, four dimensions, um, we could still ask, all right, I'm going to make something that behaves like a clock and it'll still tick. So there'll still be my personal one dimensional path through the universe. What would be weird, I guess maybe it would be a bit like this. There would be kind of your own personal dimension of time. There would be dimensions of space and then there would be sort of the external global dimensions of time, which would for you act like weird dimensions of space. That's that's sort of the best I can make. What is time is a huge weird question that we'll attack at we some will, we will. point yeah. I mean, and, and not solve. But. Yes. I mean, so it's, so it's kind of interesting is that... Um, you know, we, we normally talk about, uh, in relativity, we, we attach clocks, 
in particular locations so they can tick off the time axis. Mm -hmm. So we'd have in our universe as such we'd have multiple time axes ticking off and yeah. whether or not we coincided with any of those would be really messy i mean train timetables would be a complete disaster <laughs> i mean right. it'd be just like living in sydney at some level right <laughs> so you know you would never know maybe that explains what's happening in sydney that's right you, you would never know you know if your personal clock is aligned with any other clocks because it will depend upon which time axis you sort of flow through right and again it makes the notion of science I mean, you, uh, we know we can write down the mathematics, but you know the the notion of science and what goes on in a laboratory. We define a laboratory as three space dimensions and a clock on the wall. Yeah, it becomes just messier, right? It becomes yeah. uglier when we add more time dimensions. So we're kind of lucky that we have just the one time. But there's something else we can say about even if even if we could make sense of what an observer would be like in these other universes, we can go to things like the wave equation, things that look like the wave equations, things that look like just what would the laws of nature look like if there was two dimensions of time and space and say, okay, let's let's ignore, let's put aside for the moment what, what actually would happen for an observer, whether we could do science or learn anything or information and all those sorts of things. What would actually, what would it be like? What would the laws of nature be like? And this is a, a very interesting uh, paper uh, by Max Tegmark, which looks at this and says, okay, if you want to know what's happening further down your own timeline, right? You've got your your one dimensional clock. So I can, I you know, there's all sorts of other weird times going on, but I can at least say, all right, what happens, you know, tomorrow? Or what happens in 10 minutes time? And if, if that works in the same way as our universe, the way we do that in our universe is we look at the surroundings of us now and on the basis of that, we predict what happens further down the time dimension. Now, that's not just physicists, of course. We do that when we, we drive through traffic and we predict what someone else is going to do. A bird does that when they look where an insect's going and to, to eat it. Okay, what if we said, okay, I'm going to take a slice through space and time... And on the basis of this slice, with with at least one dimension of time and space mixed in there, on the basis of this slice, I'm going to try and work out what's going on further down in the future of my my personal future with my personal clock. And what Tegmark pointed out was actually the equations get weird. Even the simplest equations get weird. In our universe, um, we we can predict the future to some extent enough to drive cars and for birds to eat insects because they have this property that not only does the state of the universe now tell us what it's going to be like in five minutes but if i'm a little bit wrong about the universe now unless i'm in a, a rare uh, a chaotic situation and i'm particularly unlucky for most of the time right if i'm a little bit wrong about now i'll be a little bit wrong about my prediction if the bird doesn't exactly know where the insect is now, they'll be a little bit wrong about where the insect will be, will be, but they're still close enough to get it with their beak. We can still drive around. There's an interesting property if we have if we have more than one time dimension. If this slice of of now that I'm using to predict things contains a time-ish, time-like dimension in it, that property is now lost. Uh, I would need an infinite amount of knowledge of now this slice in order to make a prediction, any prediction of the future. And so it, it's weird. The universe is totally deterministic, right, within these laws, um, right? The, the, the slice of information does determine what happens in the future, but it's practically unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So I, the slightest error in what I think the world is like now even if I did a perfect calculation, which you know the bird isn't, it's doing a rough calculation. Even if I did a perfect calculation, I wouldn't be able to predict what happens in the future. And so actually for more than one time dimension and actually for zero time dimensions as well, the universe is, is radically unpredictable, even though it's deterministic, even though it, it obeys laws, those laws are no use to you actually living your life or trying to get by and work out what's gonna happen in the future. So it's bizarre, isn't it's it? It's really weird. Yeah, so we, we sort of live, you know, luckily we have three space and one time dimension, but but it, why, we, why do we even consider that there could be these other possibilities? I mean, um, it, it seems like 
this is the way the universe is. Why mm. question it? And of course, this comes down to the fact that um, if we look at our leading scientific ideas, and I'll mm-hmm. put leading in quotes here because <laughs> uh, we're not really sure if we're getting close to uh, uh, the next generation of physics yet, but things like you know superstring theory mm-hmm. or M theory or whatever it's called, they require to do their calculations multiple dimensions of space, and you know it, it's uh, it's a universe that has much more complicated dimensional structure than the one we apparently live in. And of course, the, 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 uh, often people talk about it being 11 dimensional or 20 dimensional or something, mm-hmm. but we live in three with one time. So why, how does the mathematics of like superstring theory and M theory match the universe that we observe it? And of course they need some relatively undefined process that basically hides all these additional mm. um, dimensions rolls up makes yeah. them small compactifies them i mean effectively magics them away so we don't have to worry <laughs> about them we don't experience these extra dimensions on physical scales because they're ultra ultra microscopic dimensions so the, there's a process that somehow happens when the universe is made it requires all these multiple dimensions to operate but it effectively hides a large number of them to mm-hmm. leave us with three plus one so uh, it's important to like so string theory is speculative we don't know but it's important that to to point out that there's actually a really interesting result that 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 leads you in that direction that makes you ask about smaller numbers of dimensions and it was a result f- found in the i think the 1920s and 30s and uh it was val and klein garain points out that it wasn't val it was actually kaluza and what they were doing was they had Einstein's equations of general relativity. And they did the sort of thing we were asking about. What if I added an extra spatial dimension to it? So instead of our universe, right, where we have three dimensions of space, one of time, let's throw an extra one in. That's going to generate, within Einstein's theory, some extra equations. And what they discovered was, and this is the weird thing, those, those extra equations looked an awful lot like electromagnetism. And so... And especially if if you say the universe is sort of big in this direction, it's big in all these directions. If these extra dimensions... We could imagine a universe where um, the universe started contracting, but only on one of the dimensions. So the universe was big in two dimensions, but started to roll up on, on one other dimension. It would eventually look... It would look weird from the inside, but a picture from the outside might be something like a tube. So you've got two... You've got a big dimension where you can have lots of values and you have a small dimension which is bound up. So if you wrap up this extra dimension in small, it would explain why we don't observe it. And it would explain why things that move in that dimension, the properties that uh, determine how you move in that dimension, which if this is electromagnetism, that might be charge. It would tell you why charge is quantized. That, you know, the amount of charge you can have basically is 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 something like, something related to the, the size of the, that little universe. That's all happening in the 20s, right? Pull on that thread, so to speak, for about 70 years, <laughs> or, you know, 80, 90 years. And, and eventually physicists are led to something like string theory. Now, we yeah. don't know if it works, but that's a really interesting clue about, um, you know, if that worked, instead of having two things, gravity and electromagnetism, that would be one thing. It would, it would all be space-time. We just yeah. have this interesting property of space-time. But you know, we've got to, now we've got to try and make it work. So there's good scientific motivation, um, but of course understanding the process, mm. right? It's still messy. We still don't have a complete theory, etc. Yeah. And we, we don't understand this rolling up of dimensions, and we don't understand how much randomness there is in the rolling up. Yeah. You know, did the, did the universe have another option? Could it have rolled up? such that there were four spatial dimensions and mm. one time dimension, or two spatial dimensions and one time dimension, which are visible on the large scale. Mm. And as we've seen, that if those were the outcomes, then our universe would probably be uninhabitable, it'd be unpredictable. Or, mm. You know, it wouldn't be the nice steady clock kind of universe that we have around us today that would, you know, described by Newton's laws for planets, etc. So there's still a lot of mystery. A, there, there is mystery, of course, um, on why we have three space and one time. But of course, this is now leaning into anthropic reasoning because we probably wouldn't be here to be talking about this if we did live in another universe with different numbers of dimensions of space and time.